Greetings, Pittsburgh Sports Now diehards. This is Harry, the Pit Guru Paceras, and I hope you're doing well. Wanted to talk a little bit about the transition going on in the Pitt basketball program. The reason I'm touching on this, I uh, just attended the reveal on Sunday, and it is a big point of discussion. I spoke with a lot of fans, a lot of people are asking about it, and just I thought I'd provide at least my perspective on what's going on right now. And obviously, Pitt has had some players uh, transferring out of the program, uh, two in particular. I don't believe it's going to be the last player you see leaving the program. And I think what's important to understand is Pitt is in a very unique situation. Coaching changes happen. We're seeing them all over the place. Uh, St. John's lost their coach. Uh, Cincinnati just lost their coach. Um, UCLA just gained one. So there's, there's the coaching carousel happens. But what happened with Pitt is unique in that it's, it, it's an interesting juxtaposition of watching a program sink to its lowest depths that I have seen in a long, long time. And I don't think I need to spell it out. Winless in the ACC, less than 2,000 attending each game, and it was so bad that the head coach couldn't be introduced because the, because the fans were booing him. So you go from there to hiring the coach, Coach Jeff Capel, that was generally known as one of the number one recruiters in the nation. And if you go back and look at the rankings, it varies. He's in the top five, arguably was always a number one, especially if you look at the talent that Duke produced this year, all the one and dones, he was he was all he was linked to every single player. So you're taking a program that went from the rock bottom of the ACC and actually rock bottom in its history, arguably, to hiring a dynamic coach that lit it up this year. You could see the difference in play. You could see the difference in the fan base. So there were a multitude of sold-out games. So, you know, there's a movie uh, I think many of you may have seen. It's cheesy, but it's called The Purge. There's multiple purges out there where it, at midnight, every felon's allowed to go out, kill whoever they want, do whatever they want, but they, they eradicate a lot of people. Well, what you're seeing now isn't that hostile, but what you're seeing is essentially a purge of the Kevin Stallings era, and it's doing, it's happening in a very expedited process. So, you know, you look at a player like Cam Davis, when he committed, um, I, I was the first guy to interview him. It took me a long time to dig up where he was at, anything on his history, no one knew anything about him. Cam is a great kid, probably a solid D2 starter or a lower echelon D1 um, but ACC caliber, caliber, I think a lot of people understand that he really wasn't there. It was kind of a, a given that he may leave. Malik Ellison, it was an interesting case. Um, I knew the previous staff, despite all their foibles, very well. All I heard over and over again was how good Ellison was. If only we had Malik, wait till you see Malik. Well, for some reason, the game did not translate this year. We didn't see it happening. In my humble opinion, Malik Ellison is a freak athlete and an average basketball player. Um, I, I think, you know, it didn't shock me. I've got to know uh, Coach Christopher very well, Pitt strength and conditioning coach. He raved about his strength, his athleticism, and I believe everything he said from his standpoint. He was an amazing athlete. He was a strong athlete. He could jump. But when you put him on the basketball court, the synapses weren't clicking. I, I didn't see an ACC caliber player. At, at one point, it was almost painful to play him. I mean, he was missing layups. So it didn't shock me entirely that he left. And again, I do believe there's some bubble players that are out there that will be leaving. So what you are seeing is a purge of the Kevin Stallings era. Um, it might seem extreme. It's probably better that it's happening sooner rather than later, um, because really if the chips fall in Pitt's place right now and Coach Capel can bring in a higher caliber player, which he already has done, um, the three freshmen that are going to be coming in next year are already kind of a step above what we've seen over the last decade, possibly. Um, 
I think you're going to see a team that could easily compete. I don't know if it'll be a tournament team. That all depends on the grad transfers, junior college players, experienced players that he brings in. I hate to put that on a group of freshmen coming in and go, yep, they're going to get us to the promised land. But again, every team goes through transition when they have a coaching change. I still believe Pitts is unique, very unique, because of the juxtaposition of how low the program went and the type of the caliber of recruiter that was brought in with Jeff Cable and the rest of his staff. So just my two cents. I wouldn't see this. I wouldn't worry about it. Fans have asked about it. It's a natural progression that is happening significantly faster. Coach Cable came in was sheer class the first year. He didn't push anyone out the door. He let them leave on their own. He had a full year to evaluate these players. And unfortunately, and I think few would argue with this, beyond the three freshmen and maybe Jared Wilson frame, and we'll throw maybe Terrell Brown in there, there really wasn't much ACC caliber talent, if at all, if any. So what's happening now is actually a healthy progression, a healthy maturation of the program. And if things work out well and coach can recruit well with five open spots right now, you could be looking at a team that could compete with anybody next year in the ACC. So be happy. Don't be worried. Great to see everybody. I hope to see everybody at the spring game, spring game this Saturday. Hail to Pitt.